Twinmotion is epic and it's free, but there's just a few issues we need to talk about. First of all, camera match is something that should have been introduced in Twinmotion years ago, and I'm still perplexed as to why we haven't seen it. If you're not sure what I mean by camera match, it's relatively simple. You take a photo, and then you can easily import that into a real world scenario. So let's say you have an awesome drone photo of your overall project site that you want to basically include your twin motion render over the top of it. Now you can spend hours and hours in Photoshop trying to perfectly align it, manipulate it and get it to look photorealistic. Alternatively, you could have a stupidly simple plugin that allows you to drag and drop that photo into Twinmotion, reduce the opacity, and then orientate your scene and camera angles perfectly. Now, SketchUp does this the best, and it is why most people still use SketchUp with Twinmotion. However, for people like me who use ArchiCAD, that's just not an option. So I'd love to see Camera Match come into the next version of Twinmotion. If you've ever tried to use the measuring tool in Twinmotion, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about here. The measuring tool just sucks. It is the worst overcomplicated tool you've ever seen in your life for something that should be so simple. Twinmotion has this little stick thing that you can move around, adjust, and it will tell you the measurement. It'll tell you it perfectly, don't get me wrong, but it is so hard to use this object. You'd think you'd be able to drag and drop or click on two points or any other conventional way of measuring two things. Instead, you have to perfectly align it in 3D space to be able to get some sort of measurement out into Inmotion. Now, sure, I can jump back into ArchiCAD and I can measure everything and I can do things, but what happens if I introduce a car from Twinmotion or Sketchfab? What happens if I throw a person in and I need to know the height of this person? I have to create some ridiculously dumb object above that person's head so that there is a measurement plane against it. These things are usually what I'm measuring in Twinmotion. I'm not measuring my model. I know exactly how big my spaces are and how big my building is, but I know that a lot of objects are not importing correctly and I need to measure the size of these objects. So why on earth can't I measure objects simpler and easier and quicker? On the topic of easier, simpler and quicker, exporting Twinmotion files is just a pain. You can export a Twinmotion file and all of your resources and all of your data, share that with a colleague, they'll open it up and there'll be still files missing. Now, sure, maybe I'm doing it wrong, maybe everybody I know is doing it wrong, maybe all the videos I've seen about exporting are just telling me the wrong things. However, it would be very nice if everything that was created for that twin motion file was saved either in that twin motion file or specifically exported regardless of where you saved it. So for instance, if you have project resources in your downloads, in your OneDrive, in your desktop, all over the place because you're an unorganized mess, well, it doesn't actually export them half the time properly. And then you have colleagues asking you for these specific resources that you have to hunt and figure out where they are. Now, if Twinmotion could fix that problem, that would be great. Whilst we're on the topic of exporting, Twinmotion exports really strange on a Mac. Now, the Lumen has come in, Global Illuminations come in, exporting and quality has gotten so much better, which is awesome. Now, that's not anything that I'm gonna complain about. But if you try to export with Twinmotion on a Mac with all of your settings set to max, on occasion, just, just on occasion, you will get incredible fringing in strange places. For instance, a wall and a cornice will align, it'll be a perfect square set joint, and it should be this incredible architectural clean detail. Instead, what you get is an incredible fuzzy mess. Now, that could be to do with the fact that Macs don't have graphics card and only M3s are capable of ray tracing, but you'd think that if it's not possible to do that setting would be turned off and you just get the old previous level of detail, but it would still be clean and crisp. Instead, again, you just end up with a fuzzy mess. Generally speaking, I'm a huge perfectionist when it comes to life design and architecture. Now, that's my own problem, I know that. However, I have a little bit more of a gripe with Twinmotion's UI. In the general user interface, we have our camera angles set to field of view, which is in degrees. Sure, no problem, I'll get used to it. But as soon as you set up a camera scene and set up an image or a video, that camera changes from field of view to millimeters. 
Now, if you can tell me why and justify the explanation behind it, maybe I'll consider it. But generally speaking, you'd think that if we're talking about cameras and fields of view and perspective, you'd pick one or the other. I know that one correlates with another and you can do the maths and figure out what a 16 millimeter is to a field of view, but I shouldn't have to. I should just be able to go, I need a 35 millimeter lens. That's what this camera angle is set for. It is a digital export platform. Why is that not simple? If we go to even just add a little setting that you can toggle this on and off so that when you wanted to, you could have only millimeters or field of view, that'd be great. Let's do that. If you're new to architecture, my name's David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And on this channel, we talk all things design and architecture. If you're interested in some incredible architect resources, they're in the description down below at davidtomich.com.au. My personal favorite is of course, the construction checklist. Now it's not the most expensive product on my website, so I'm not just trying to promote it. It is genuinely something that adds value to so many people. So if you're new to the space, if you're an experienced architect or somebody that just needs a little bit of a refresher course, jump down, grab the construction checklist and make sure your documentation goes out flawless every time. Another thing that might be very specific to the Mac users out there is export times. Now, export times have come a long way and now they've gone a hell of a long way back. First of all, it used to take hours and hours to export anything from Twinmotion. Images, not even talking about videos yet. When they finally exported, there was issues, so you had to do it again. Then Twinmotion became really user-friendly. It was able to export images in a matter of seconds, if not even a couple of minutes for those more complex scenes. Now, I was happy to wait a couple seconds, I was happy to wait a couple minutes for these relatively high quality images. But all of a sudden, once Lumen came into place, our export times went from a couple minutes back to a couple of hours. But the weird thing is, you can export the exact same image with the exact same settings, with the exact same background programs being used, the same GPU, the same RAM, absolutely everything identical. And in one scenario, the images will export in a number of minutes, awesome. In the second scenario, they'll export in 50, 60, an hour and a half, if not even two hours later. So I'm unable to justify the export times of Twinmotion at the moment, and I simply don't know why. So that is a, just a huge feature that needs to be fixed and resolved. If you're in Australia like me, then the plan selections in Twinmotion are a little bit, you know, too tropical to say the least. There are a few more selections that have come in recently and made it significantly better. I believe there's one specific Australian tree. So it would be really, really nice if we could have an abundance more of Australian native plants. They are so unique, so rare, and predominantly exclusive to Australia. So I'm sure there wouldn't be that many users using them. However, they're incredibly beautiful species that can add so much life and quality to any image. I've talked about this before and I'll talk about it again. If you are in need of incredible plants for your twin motion scenarios and scenes, make sure you check out Globe Plants. Now at the start, I said twin motion was free, but here's the kicker. It didn't used to be free. It actually used to be paid only a few months ago. And some suckers like this guy right here ended up paying for a full year of twin motion subscription. Now, cool, it's free moving forward for all users making less than 1 million US dollars a year. But it is a little bit annoying to me that they've made this decision just as they started introducing a paid feature. For years, twin motion was free for Archicad users. And then for the first time in God knows how long, it wasn't free, I paid for it. And within a few months, it was free again. So if I just waited, I could have had it free. I guess that's more of an annoying gripe with me than it is a missing feature, so we better move on. The last feature that I wanna have a small, small whinge about is the fact that you can import two different projects into the same exact scene or the same template that you've set up for yourself. Thinking that the same elevation, the same facade, and the same orientation would look identical in both projects. Even when the exact same coordination is used, and the exact same height datums are imported into two different projects, for some reason, the lighting quality of the sun and the atmosphere is just never the same. So you have to go through and readopt all of your lighting settings for every single bloody image. 
and I'm so over recreating the same template for twin motion. That's all from me team. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the subscribe button and like always, I'll see you next week.